everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Pardon me if I don't look at the camera the whole time because it's kind of crowded out here. Driving around, getting some errands done. And you know what, I got to thinking, we really need an extra episode this week. So, we're gonna be reviewing this interesting little gadget from a company called Monodeal. Now, we've done some stuff from them before, um, and it's been pretty cool, it's very unique. Uh, a lot of novelty products, but also some really good kind of day-to-day -day products. This one will probably fall into the latter category, but I have to admit, I'm a little bit, not concerned, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna like this. Usually, you know, by the time we, you know, obtain a product to review it, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna like this thing. I mean, I have to have an interest level in it to some level in order to provide a good review, I feel like. So, with this though, it's a popular new type of CD slash DVD player that's really permeating the market. And I'm not sure if it's a good thing or not. It doesn't look visually appealing to me. And the idea of it is kind of bizarre. So, I'm going into this one skeptical. And we'll have to see. I don't know. So we're really going to discover together whether or not this is any good or not. So join me on this show as we take a look at this interesting CD DVD player. You're not going to want to miss this. Okay, guys, here it is. And again, I don't know if I'm going to like this. I mean, I, this is the unit itself. The design looks so bizarre, like nothing I've ever seen before. And, you know, to me, a CD player is usually black and sleek and you know, cool looking, it's not wall mounted. Now this also is a DVD player. So my initial thoughts are, well maybe it would just be cool like in the garage hanging on the wall as a CD player, but, so there it is. I'm gonna tell you all of my thoughts as we go through this. It's got decent weight. I mean, it's just wrapped in plastic there. Um, it's plastic construction, obviously. You know, it feels like it's kind of a matte finish white, which is kind of cool. I'm glad it's not like glossy. Up here you can see buttons. It looks like these are transport buttons. By the way, if you hear hail or rain, we got a storm moving through right now. Um, but yeah, interesting, kind of a uh, fogged, frosted glass or plastic lid. One of the things they say is that some of their competitors, because there's a lot of products on Amazon that look very, very similar to this. They say a lot of their competitors don't have the lid, the dust protect protector lid. I'm gonna pull this out. There's the transport, or the CD transport, laser transport, excuse me. Looks fine. I mean, the construction quality is fine. It's more of a design issue. There's a display, find out exactly what that shows. To me, it's more of a curiosity. So there's the HDMI out. Like I said, this is a DVD player. Let's see if we can get it to focus. So yeah, HDMI out, USB in. And an AV out. I'm assuming that's like an analog out. And then this is the uh, USB cord right down the middle. Oh, that's so weird. Look. So the USB cord is also like a, <laughs> like a pole chain. Oh, that is so weird. Oh, look. And it's coming to life. So apparently it's got some battery charge. Like it, okay. We're plugged into nothing, as you can see. And it's on. So... Apparently it is battery operated. So let's grab a CD to start with and go from there. Very interesting little unit. I guess before we do that, let's look in this other container here and see what we have. Okay, it looks like we got a wall mounting kit with some drywall screws. Pretty hefty remote control. Again, very curious. Oh, these are cool. These, this is that, uh, like a stand. We've seen these before to hold up records. These are really cool. Something to do with the wall mount kit, I presume. There's the analog cable, AV cable. They do include batteries. I always get a kick out of these no brand batteries. Supercell, heavy duty battery. Probably not alkaline. Typically, if it says heavy duty, it's probably not. And then a wall wart. Interesting. Okay, well let's grab a CD and try that out first. Like I almost get the idea of a wall mounted CD. I could see it like in the garage or the kids playroom, but this on and off with the USB cord, this is something we were told never to do. Yank on the cord, you guys, but here we go. Yanking on the cord, it's the way it was designed. I wanna be optimistic though. I'm gonna give it an open-minded approach. Try with a CD first. I presume, looks like there are speakers built in. As you can tell, I haven't really researched 
much about this unit. I'm just kind of winging it. <laughs> but I figured we just kind of experience it together. It's fun watching it spin up. That's cool. It is classical, so we can play some of the audio. Volume. Forward and back skip. There's no play button, so I guess it's playing automatically. I'm not hearing anything yet. Very, very low audio coming out. So weird. Oh, I just hit stop. I thought that was forward skip. That's Bluetooth. So it's got a Bluetooth receiver so you can connect your phone to it. All right, let's start it up again. This thing is so weird. Such a weird idea. Okay, we're loading the CD and it's playing. Ooh, that's kind of cool. I do like the display. Sorry, I'm shaky. That is cool, like yellow LEDs. I hear very quiet audio coming out of these speakers. Let me try and crank the volume, see how high it goes. Okay, so it's on 20 and that's still really quiet. I know it's classical, but I need to, oh. You know what? So it's louder, but you're not going to fill a room with that. I mean, unless you like your music kind of quiet, it's kind of quietish. You can still hear it. I mean, it's what you would expect from those built in speakers there. Really interesting. I wonder what other controls we get on the remote. Let's take a closer look at that. Okay, so we've got our Supercell TNQ brand. What are these? Carbon Mercury, carbon zinc batteries. The remote is just big enough. At first I was like wondering what the batteries were for. <laughs> because usually these remotes just have like button cells, but this one actually does take these triple A's. So there we go. So close look at the remote. Definitely more control on the remote than you get on the physical device. I'm trying to think if I see of anything, anything of interest here. There's EQ settings, that's pretty cool. You can program it, different audio setups, title, subcopy, angle. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think some of the features of DVD that never came to fruition, like multiple angle search and stuff, is just not widely used. Zoom. So, yeah, a lot of this is for the DVD, but from an audio standpoint, let's see if this helps us out at all. So I'm going back over here. Display. I don't know where the receiver is on this thing either. Mm, let's see. Like, do I have to change mode on here? Okay, so we're loading there. I do not have volume control on this, which is kind of bizarre. Why would they not have volume control? Maybe they do. Not. Oh, yeah, they do right here. Okay, volume control, forward skip. Seems to work. Okay, I have to try this while it's running. If I just pull this chain, does it just shut it off? Okay, so that's a hard on and off switch. <laughs> so weird. To pull the USB cable. I mean, that's just, I don't know, why? Okay, so let's spin it up again. And we'll connect the video as well. We'll connect the video as well. But I wanna play a little bit more with the audio side of it. So EQ, where did I see that? Okay, right there. Classical, rock, pop. I can hear differences. I can hear differences. Audio. What that does. Program. Doesn't look like a program tracks this way. Repeat. Also doesn't seem to work for the uh, CD side of it. I would think that repeat would I would think that repeat would work for that, but it's really not. So I was asking my son a minute ago what he thought of this, and he nailed it. I think I know why I don't like the design, at least aesthetically. It looks like something you'd see in a hospital. 
It looks like something that's hanging on the wall in the ER. By the way, check this out. If you pull this down, watch what happens. Watch the laser. Now it's not gonna do it. Yep, see that laser go off? That's not good. I mean, unless you're looking at it real close, it's probably not gonna do too much damage, but you don't want that laser going off where you can see it. And this is not enough. There should be something solid here to block that from happening. They shouldn't just assume you have a disc in it, which is what the situation is supposed to be. I shouldn't have done that without a disc, but still it shouldn't rely on that. By the way, if you put it in a stand, it's kind of cool, I guess, in that sense, you can have it on the stand without drilling it into your wall. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna test out the DVD capability. Uh, I've got a little HDMI monitor here. By the way, these are super cool. Not only is it an HDMI monitor, it's got um, analog inputs as well. It uses the same idea. One of these cables will allow you to plug it into a RCA analog input or HDMI, which is what we're gonna go with. They do not supply the HDMI cable, no surprise, because it's sort of a premium item. But this will work as a monitor too. It's even got an internal battery, so you can uh, use it wirelessly. Let's see, HDMI in on this. And we just press on. And it's gonna work for a good quick and dirty monitor solution for us. Let me tilt down a little bit so you can see that in the frame. Okay, uh, I'm gonna put a DVD in this time. Home Improvement, my favorite TV show, season five. And I presume that most of you know the experience of controlling the DVD is gonna be here. So pull chain, turn this bad boy on again, and let's see, it'll spin back up, I presume. And let's see what we got. Very bizarre, very, very bizarre. If you like the design, you know, more power to you, that's fine. Okay, came up with the Monodeal brand. Okay, cool. And I don't know, is it up, do you think it's up converting the HDMI output? It might be. There's also an analog out on this, which I showed you with the cable. Um, but I usually go HDMI out even on DVD if I can because of the fact that usually it's up converting it uh, to 1080p or something in between. This looks good. Obviously, hard to tell on this monitor. It looks like it's fine in terms of quality, picture quality. Um, let's see here. I'm going to go to the DVD menu, the root menu. I'll pull this up so you can see it a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, it's responsive. It's doing the things that you would think it would do. It's forcing you to watch FBI warnings before you can do what you want. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to work fine. Episode selection. By the way, if you don't watch Home Improvement, come on guys, this is the best show ever. I love Home Improvement. Yeah. I mean, it works. It works fine. I like it. In terms of that aspect, I like it. Um, Again, from a styling aesthetic though, if you've got like a nice slick looking home theater, are you really gonna want this big white wall mounted thing? Even if it's a desk mounted thing, are you really gonna want, you know, everything to, look at that, you can see the laser shining through the disc. That's not, that's not, I don't think that would be a good thing, especially if it's on the wall looking back at you on the couch. I don't think that's great. That's really, really interesting. You would think they would need to cover that up. Even if I had this in the garage, I think I put some electrical tape over that because you don't want that laser, especially from what I understand, the DVD, uh, when it's reading a DVD, it's gonna be brighter. That's not something you wanna be looking into even through a disc. Some CDs and DVDs are somewhat transparent, which is why we can see that even through the disc. Another thing I was reading about um, some of the specs on this, it does play pretty much every format of audio CD, super audio CDs, um, let's see. I don't know why I'm trying to remember when I can just pull up the documentation. Um, but let's see, so yeah, we can, sorry. It's glossy, so it's kind of shiny. DVD, super video, CD, video CD, CD, CDG. I don't know what that is. HD CD, WMI, AVI, MP3, JPEG. So you can play pictures through the HDMI or analog outputs, but it's got the ability to copy media, not from, you know, copy protected stuff like this, I don't think, 
But if you have like a, a data disk in there with JPEGs, you can copy those to your thumb drive if you plug the thumb drive into the side. So interesting, interesting device. Okay guys, here it is. You get everything seen here. The player itself with built-in speakers that aren't that great. Interesting, but kind of cool looking display. Remote control, analog cable. You don't get the H HDMI cable. You have to buy that separately. The wall wart to charge it is the USB plug, which is also the power cord, which is, or the uh, power switch. Uh, you do get a little stand. You get the manual, obviously, and a wall mount kit. I don't know if I'm going to recommend this. I am going to put the link if you guys want one. I don't want to stand in the way of that. My only concern, concern, is this laser, uh, whether or not that's safe, having that, you know, visible through that. I don't know if this opaque covering is enough to protect you from the radiation of that. That's my concern. Uh, if you take that out of the equation, I'm still not super excited about it. I think it's kind of interesting. Um, maybe in a garage, a basement, something like that. Besides that, I don't see it as something I would want as a standalone unit just because the speakers are pretty weak on it. Didn't sound that great. And as a DVD player, usually you're going to have a TV and stuff that looks really slick, so you wouldn't want this thing there. But that being said, they're super popular right now. At least there's a lot of them on Amazon. And this is, seems to be the best of the bunch in terms of all things considered. Because like I said, a lot of these don't even have this at all. There's just nothing. So I'm not sure. I mean, obviously this thing has all of its um, whatever kind of certifications are required, I presume, in terms of FCC. But that's what I think about it. So honest review. And if you want to snag one, I'll put one in. I'll put the link in the description below. I'll probably also put a link to this guy. This is cool. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but SD card slot and USB. You can record any source that you plug into it, uh, which is really, really cool for converting old family movies and stuff into a digital format. So anyhow, this is from ClearClick, by the way. This is from Monodeal. So I hope that was an interesting show, something that perhaps you were wondering what it was, how it worked. And now you know, now we both know. Okay guys, and that's gonna do it for today. If you're guessing that I probably filmed this outro seconds after finishing the intro, you are right. Therefore, for me to go on and say, wasn't that awesome, it was great, would be disingenuous. So I'm not going to do it. Instead, I'm going to say whatever my comments were before this part of the video or how I feel about it. If you wanna get one of these, I am gonna put a link in the description below. Your purchase directly supports this channel. Now, I wanna say thank you so much for being out there and for doing everything you're doing to be an odd, awesome audience, awesome fan base for this you know, shared exploration of retro tech and records and all this fun stuff we do together. Also, I wanna remind you, if you wanna send records for me to review, uh, to play, I will give you guys a shout out. I'm gonna put the address, probably, it'll probably be in the uh, description of this video, but it's always in the about tab of the channel. So send us stuff to review, tech, records, whatever it is, we'll give you a huge shout out. But that's gonna do it for today, you guys. I gotta keep my eyes on the road. So we'll talk to you next time. Thank you so much for being there. Happy record hunting. We'll see you.